Arabic word haki means a wind from the east. In northern Morocco's Rif Mountains, the haki blows almost constantly. Now it's become one of the country's leading energy sources. It drives the Tanger Wind Farm's 165 turbines. Mohamed Arouijal is the wind farm's director. He, four engineers and about two dozen technicians keep the turbines spinning. Every two days, they run a routine check on the plateau. The wind has to blow at a yearly average speed of 10 metres per second to make a location profitable for wind turbines. At around 17 metres per second, a turbine can generate some 850 kilowatt hours. When the wind speed reaches 25 metres per second, the turbine automatically shuts down. That kind of wind is too strong for the equipment. That happens a few times a month, more often in summer than winter. The east wind blows up here from the Mediterranean Sea about 40 kilometers away. The wind farm went online in November 2011. Its 140 megawatt capacity is about a quarter of what a small coal-fired power plant can generate. Spain and Germany helped finance the project. Renewable energy sources could supply a large part of Morocco's power needs without greenhouse gas emissions. Demand for electricity is rising an average of 7% a year, so Morocco has to provide an additional 4 to 500 megawatts of production capacity per year. There is an enormous potential in wind and solar energy here, and making better use of it could take a lot of pressure off both the budget and the environment. As Morocco's economy grows, it needs more and more energy. Till now, more than 90% of its energy has come from imports. Gasoline, diesel and fuel oil are offloaded at the port of Tangier. It goes to drive power plants, machinery and generators. Morocco has moved from a developing to an emerging economy. Rabat, Casablanca and Tangier are economic hubs and the growing demand for energy isn't only coming from industry. It's also coming from individuals, like Hadija Boumkasa, a seamstress in Tangier's old town. Her mother started the little family business some 40 years ago. Khadija began helping out as a young girl. My mother and her employees did everything by hand, but eventually we started getting so many jobs we bought a sewing machine. That was eight years ago. Then the business expanded and we bought a second, third and a fourth sewing machine. Demand for jellabas peaks during summer. These are the loose robes worn by women, but the power supply is not reliable. When the power goes out completely, the seamstresses have to go back to sewing by hand. So Hadija has been thinking about installing a rooftop solar array. The power outages cause big problems for us. We have to stop work and our customers are unhappy. And electricity is quite expensive. Sometimes I can't pay the power bill right away and then they turn it off. The objective is sufficient energy to meet the demand, preferably from climate-friendly sources. Morocco needs its own trained personnel to be able to make long-term and independent use of solar and wind power. Starting in late 2012, seven universities, such as this one in Rabat, will be offering master's degree programs in renewable energies. Specialists from Germany are to assist in the job of training engineers to run wind farms, for example. Wind can develop a lot of jobs in the country. Uh, it also has a social impact on the regions. You know that the very windy regions are very often poor regions. 
and developing wind parks in these regions can give also some uh, support for these regions, economical support. That's also why we have some training centers and uh, will be developed in Warzazat, in Ujda, in Tangier, uh, dedicated to these technologies. The plan is ambitious. Within eight years, Morocco is set to be generating 2,000 megawatt hours from wind power alone. That's 14 times the capacity now supplied by the Tangier wind farm. But then Morocco has more than 3,000 kilometers of windy coastline to harness. The need for qualified personnel is already urgent. Many of the workers don't have enough practical experience. You can't learn all the necessary skills in just one or two years. I'm sure we'll need three or four years for that. Mohamed Arouajal is lucky that his turbines are still relatively new. They don't need much maintenance yet. The next big wind farm is already in the planning, and it will require even more qualified engineers.